All right, with this forecast video update on this Thursday, January the 13th, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown, and I hope that you all had a wonderful day. And I have to say, this has been really just a pretty gorgeous day we had across central Florida, where we had uh, temperatures in the 70s in some places, but some changes are going to be coming as we head into tomorrow, and that is because we were watching two fronts we got the first one that's going to be arriving overnight or move through overnight tonight i should say but that but the first front will be much weaker and that's going to bring some slightly cooler temperatures for your friday but then temperatures will start to uh warm up just a little bit on saturday but we'll be watching another cold front that's going to be arriving by sunday especially late sunday night but before that we may see some of that rain move in before it, the, again, before the cold front does push through central Florida. And the second one will be much stronger than the weaker one. And that's going to bring some much colder air here to central Florida by early next week, including the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. So hope you all are prepared uh, for the much uh, colder weather as we get into Monday and Tuesday, which I'll expl explain more about that here in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and look at the high temperatures we've seen today in central Florida. Again, it's been really just another gorgeous day. I hope you had a chance to get outside and enjoy these uh, comfortable temperatures. So right here in Orlando today, the high temperature did hit or did reach at about 71 degrees. And the same goes right here farther south down uh, in Kissimmee. Over here towards Titusville, the high today uh, reached up about 73. It was 72 today in Sanford. It was 71 in Daytona. But a little more cooler if you go farther up towards the north in places like Ocala, the villages in Palm Coast, where you mostly have seen highs in the upper 60s. And the same also goes farther south you go in Lakeland. And by the way, uh, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Mike Pierce uh, this evening because he just popped in the house to, uh, just a minute ago, checking in from Atlanta. So hope you're doing well, Mike. And thank you for stopping by uh, once again by saying hi. I do really appreciate it. Okay, so temperatures right now, since that we had, it is uh, dark outside, and as you can tell, that uh, most of us are looking cool uh, at this uh, 8 p.m. hours, like right over here towards Interstate 75. Temperatures are currently sitting in the low to mid 50s, and the same goes also for you folks up around the Palm Coast area. Other areas along and along and east of I-4, temperatures are mostly sitting in the low to mid 60s. So if you get any outdoor plans uh, later on tonight. Uh, just uh, grab a jacket or perhaps a sweater uh, since that temperatures are cooling off. But other than that, I expect the uh, conditions to, again, stay pretty quiet for the rest of tonight. Okay, so let's now go ahead and uh, take a look at Futurecast and show you how cool it's going to be as we get into tomorrow. Because again, a weaker front will be moving in overnight tonight. And before we move on to future cast, as always, folks, if you're just coming into uh, Facebook Live on this uh, Thursday evening, I don't mind if you could go ahead and share this live feed to your other Facebook followers because you know my motto, and that is uh, sharing is caring. And before we uh, move on, as always, like I always do every night, I'm going to go ahead and share uh, this live Facebook feed to my uh, to the other pages. So if you could just give me uh, just a couple minutes. Uh, that will be appreciated. And after that, after I share the, the feed, of course, we will take a look at Futurecast. All right, so now let's uh, again look have a look at uh, Futurecast and show you again how cool it's going to be for tomorrow. But uh, the first off, as we head into the overnight hours and into daybreak tomorrow, we'll start off with mostly low temperatures. Once the after the front passes through, 
mainly in the mid to upper 40s. So yes, it'll be a little chilly to begin our Friday mornings. We're talking about uh, 48 for the low tomorrow morning in Sanford, 46 for you folks in Daytona Beach, and the same goes for the villages. And perhaps there could be some lower 40s up around the Palm Coast area for tomorrow morning. But it seems like right here in Orlando, we may start off with a low temperature at 7 a.m., at or near 50. So you may want to have a sweater or a jacket before you head out the door uh, for your morning drive to work in school. And then after a very chilly start to the day, later in the afternoon, again, temperatures will stay just slightly cooler in the way of low to mid 60s. So I, so I do believe that you may need to have a jacket uh, if you're going to be out and about uh, like running errands or perhaps uh, spending a day at the theme parks because it's not going to be a big warm up. Uh, to end at least to end the uh, work week so just uh, fyi but at least we'll see some sunshine which is a good thing but it'll just be the temperatures that will not uh be will not be that warm out for your outdoor plans uh, tomorrow evening uh it seems that temperatures will cool off down into the 50s so yes you definitely may want to have a jacket yet again if you got any outdoor plans uh because it's going to be feeling a whole lot cooler after the sun goes down and then for the rest of the nighttime hours, late tomorrow night, and perhaps to begin our holiday weekend, which is Saturday morning. And yep, it will be storming off chilly with mostly low temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. We're talking about a low temperature early Saturday at 47 in the metro. We're talking about some lower 40s up around Ocala. Uh, 44 will be the low temperature early Saturday in the villages. 42 in Titusville. 44 for the low Saturday in Daytona Beach, and the same goes for you folks in Palm Coast. So if you're going to be outdoors early Saturday morning, perhaps maybe starting with the, uh, I guess, a round of golf, uh, you may want to have, a again, a sweater or a jacket because it will, again, not be, it will not be feeling that warm. And then after another chilly start to the day Saturday, as we get into the afternoon, temperatures will start to look a little better. So we, this will be, it'll be the mostly the same pattern we have seen today and yesterday as we wore back into the upper 60s and into the low 70s. So it should be a perfect day to get outdoors uh, and, uh, and, uh, and enjoy your, I guess you can say, your activities that you may have, excuse me, that you may have planned. So if you plan on doing that, then you should be, uh, you should be fine. And then for Saturday evening, if you got plans, uh, you may need a jacket because uh, temperatures will cool off slightly from the low 70s and upper 60s down into the upper 50s and low 60s. But other than that, not too bad to end Saturday. And then as we head towards one in the morning on Sunday, which is still part of late Saturday, not Saturday night, of course, we'll see temperatures again remain cool in the 50s and the low 60s. So there you have it there, guys. So the, so let's go ahead and have a look at the radar and see what's going on this evening in Central Florida. And as you can see, we are looking quiet. So we'll be, most, we'll be mostly quiet here for the next uh, couple of days until we get the uh, next chance of rain to move in on Sunday ahead of the second front. And again, the next, the second strong cold or the sec or yeah, the second cold front will be much stronger. Uh, then the weaker one that's going to be moving moving in overnight, and that's going to bring again much colder air to begin uh, the upcoming work week, including on Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. So now let's go ahead and have a look at the GFS and see what's going to be happening as we get into the next couple of weeks. As we are about to end mid-January and get close to enter late January. <clears throat> so we will begin off with uh, Sunday. And again, that's when our next uh, system will, will be moving in. And that's going to bring a pretty high chance for some rain right here in central Florida. And there could be a few thunderstorms in the mix too, but I don't expect any widespread severe weather with this system. But uh, the same system though, that's gonna be bringing rain here in central Florida, will be bringing also another snowstorm, perhaps an ice storm, of course, in portions of Georgia and the Carolinas, but others, including portions of Alabama and perhaps up to Tennessee and perhaps into the Northeast, we'll see a snowstorm for the second half of our holiday weekend. So that could cause some travel uh, issues uh, for that day. 
So if you're playing, playing on heading over to, uh, let's say, Nashville, Atlanta, Birmingham, or the Carolinas, or perhaps as far north as New York City, either on Sunday and Monday, then uh, you may you may want to uh, keep an eye on the weather and also check back with your flight, uh, at least with your airlines, I guess you can say, about your flight information uh, if you have to travel out of Orlando either on Sunday or Monday. And with the rain that we'll see on Sunday, again, that's when our next uh, cold front will be moving through. And I think during the day, we'll see temperatures to remain milder, I guess you can say, with upper 60s and into the low 70s. But again, if you look up here to the north, up around the Mississippi Valley, yep, that's going to bring some much colder temperatures in the way of mid to upper 30s. So, yep, uh, so, so that's why that winter is sure, sure is definitely for here. At least in time for uh, 2022. Now, once that front passes through central Florida, along with the rain, we look at the low temperatures for the morning of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And as you can see, it will begin off with just uh, just chilly. So it seems that we'll see lows in the 40s if you live just to the north of Orlando. So we're talking about maybe a low temperature early Monday at 43. In Ocala, you can see a low at 46 early Monday in the villages. And the same goes over towards Daytona Beach. And could be a low of 43 in Palm Coast, but for other areas, including Orlando, we may begin in the upper 40s and into the low 50s uh, that morning. Now, for those of you that do have to go to work uh, early Monday morning, because I know most people will be off and I know most kids will be out of school because of the holiday, uh, you may want to have that, ja that jacket and or sweater pretty handy before you uh, leave your house. And now, if you look at those low temperatures for early during the early morning hours of, of, of MLK Day, as you can see, that it may begin with mostly below freezing temperatures. And I'm talking about mostly in the way of 20s and into the low 30s. <clears throat> now, for the rest of the day on the, Martin, on the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, we'll see, again, most of that rain pushed off towards the East Coast. But if you, look, if you notice here over towards the Gulf Coast of our state, which could impact some areas in our viewing area, like parts of Marion and Sumter counties, uh, a brief shower or two can't be ruled out, but I think we'll see some clearing uh, during the afternoon and evening hours on Martin, Luther King, on Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. So just uh, FYI, and perhaps the same thing for most of the Mississippi Valley, and it's just going to be the temperatures that'll be feeling a whole lot different, because if you look at those highs for MLK Day, we are talking about temperature stain not just on the cool side, but perhaps even chilly. So we're talking about highs remaining in the upper 50s and into the mid 60s, we'll call as we head into Monday. But it'll be more chillier if you go farther up north where highs will be uh, mostly not getting out of the 40s and some in the low 50s. But if we look at the lows for the morning of Tuesday, take a look at this. Yes, it will not just be chillier, but perhaps it'll get uh, it'll get a bit colder to start off that morning. So some of you, especially North of Orlando, could start off with mostly in the mid to upper 30s. And, and, and whenever, whenever there's 30s in the forecast uh, on some mornings in the winter, that, that could perhaps uh, produce the possibility of some frost. So some frost is not out of the question if you live in our northern counties of central Florida. So that's something we'll have to uh, watch closely. But the rest of the viewing area, including Orlando, the frost potential looks to be low, and that's because temperatures will remain in the 40s. And it's just uh, a little too warm for that. But there'll, there'll be some more much colder air to begin with early Tuesday up around the Mississippi Valley as lows will start off in the 20s and into the low 30s. And after a very cold start to the day, later in the day on Tuesday, we'll see things again mainly dry not just for here in central Florida, but elsewhere in the southeast, as we're expecting lots of sunshine. And as we take a look at our high temperatures, and yep, it will not be warming up that much as we're expecting to remain in the upper 50s and into the low 60s as we get into that day. And perhaps temperatures will start to warm up a little bit if you go towards the Mississippi Valley uh, as it'll start to slightly creep up into the 50s and into the low 60s. But it's not a big warm-up, though, so just so you know. <laughs> All right, and then heading into the middle of uh, the work week. This is for Wednesday, January 19th, and still 
I don't expect any issues here in Central Florida as we're as we will as we will be seeing another day of mostly sunny conditions. And the same also goes for the rest of the Mississippi Valley region. Now, if you look up here to the north and west over portions of Mississippi and perhaps points north, there may be another system that may try to uh, sweep in, and that could be ahead of another front. So that's something we'll again keep an eye out, but that could change as we get closer. So I'll keep you posted. But thankfully, though, as we get into the middle of next week, after dealing with these uh, colder temperatures that we will be seeing Monday and Tuesday, uh, it's going to be gone. So temperatures will start to rebound back into the upper 60, 60s and into the low 70s. So that is definitely much better. So if you got some outdoor plans uh, Wednesday, it could be maybe a good day to do that. And it looks like temperatures will also get uh, warmer up here in the Mississippi Valley, where highs will uh, may, may not just be in the 50s, but even some will hit some mid to upper 60s. But if you go over here towards near Mobile and perhaps over here back in New, into, into the New Orleans areas, temperatures may even hit the low 70s. <clears throat> All right, now here is a week from today. So that takes you to next Thursday, January 20th. And Yep, like I've told you, there's going to be another system that will be moving into the southeast, but mostly in the Mississippi Valley region. Now, for here in central Florida, weather-wise, we will still be looking uh, mainly dry, so I think we'll see another sunny day ahead for next Thursday. But with the system here, or up there towards up towards the valley, that's going to bring some more, uh, some more rain, uh, if that is the case. And for our high temperatures on that day... Yep, that is ahead of another strong cold front. And for our temperatures here ahead of it in central Florida, it will be looking warm in the way of low to mid 70s. So, so if you do love the 70s, then it looks like Thursday may be the only day that we may see temperatures get warm like that. So, so you may want to get so you may want to get outside and perhaps enjoy the 70s before another front moves in. Because if you notice on the back side of the front in the Mississippi Valley. It is going to turn colder again as temperatures drop from the 50s and 60s down into the 30s and 40s. And by the time the system gets close to central Florida, as we get into next Friday, which is January 21st, uh, it seems that it's going to weaken just a little bit. And that may bring just a little bit of a shower activity if you go just to the north, like let's say Ocala and Palm Coast <laughs> Palm Coast, and other areas along Interstate 95. There may be a few isolated showers. We'll call for about a 20% coverage if that is the case. But the rest of the viewing area remains uh, mostly sunny and dry. And I believe the valley will also will see some clearing from the uh, unsettled weather that we'll see next Thursday. And as we take a look at those high temperatures, and there it is. Yep, another round of some colder weather will roll in once the front passes through. And that's and that's going to bring temperatures down from the 70s to the 50s and low 60s. So another sweater weather day is ahead for next Friday. But if you go farther up to the north in the Mississippi Valley, it is going to be more chillier as highs will remain in the 30s, upper 30s, that is, and even into the low to mid 40s. Now, if we if we go go to the morning of next Friday uh, and see how our how our low temperatures go, well, it seems that temperatures will begin chilly in some places uh, next Friday morning, as some of you along Interstate 75 may see uh, lows in the 40s, with others in the viewing area starting off in the upper 40s and into the mid 50s. Now, if we go up into the Mississippi Valley, including the Panhandle, it is going to start off much colder as high, our not highs, but lows uh, will begin in the 20s and in the low 30s. Now, if we go ahead and look at the lows for next Saturday morning, let's see uh, how it plays out as far as cold temperatures go. And the good news is that I don't expect temperatures to get that cold in central Florida. So instead, it will just be another chilly start, especially uh, mostly if you live north of Orlando. So we're talking about mainly some mid to upper 40s. Uh, if you live in areas like Ocala, the villages, Daytona Beach or Palm Coast, but other areas, including Orlando, will start off in the in the upper 40s and low 50s. 
And it'll be another cold start to the day next Saturday if you live up around the Mississippi Valley as lows will begin in the 20s and the low 30s. Uh, later in the day of next Saturday, January 22nd, uh, we'll see again another dry day in and around the state, including the Mississippi Valley region. So not bad there, except it could be some showers down in South Florida. And as we look at our high temperatures, and it looks like it's going to still stay cooler uh, for most of the day, that is. So it seems that we'll, we'll see highs only get into the upper 50s and into the mid 60s as we get into uh, the day on Saturday, January 22nd. But it may start to feel comfortable if we go down towards the southern part of the state where highs will reach back into the low to mid 70s which will be some good weather uh down there if that is the case up north you go into the mississippi valley highs will only stay much cooler and chillier in the way of some 40s and perhaps into the low 50s okay now here is sunday january 23rd and Still here in Central Florida, for most of the viewing area, that is, we're, we're still going to we're still going to see uh, mostly dry weather, lots of sunshine. But the exception will be down south, where anywhere from Southern Polk and down in South Florida may see just a few isolated showers. But it's not going to rain all day, I don't think, if that is the case. But other than that, the rest of the southeast remains on the dry side as we approach that day. And as we uh, take a look at those high temperatures, and I think we'll start to uh, warm up just a little bit, but still look and remain on the cool side in the low to mid 60s. So we can handle that uh, if that is the case. And it seems that temperatures up around the Mississippi Valley will start to warm up a little bit, but still looking to stay much cooler in the 50s to at or near 60 degrees. All right, uh, now here, here as we enter the land of voodoo country, and this will take you to Monday, January 24th. Right now, the weather looks to stay mainly dry with uh, plenty of sun as the uh, system that's going to be bringing a little rain down in South Florida will start to move off towards the east. So no, no, no major issues uh, as far as I'm seeing for the other areas of the southeast as we get into the final week of this month. And as we uh, take a look at those high temperatures and still, not no signs of any big warm-ups uh, here in the state as we're expecting to stay in the upper 50s mainly to the north and west and like in, in around the villages in ocala with other areas uh getting into the low to getting into the low to mid 60s but the chilliness will still be up to the north where highs will remain in the, in the 40s to at or near 50. And i believe there is another cold front that's going to start to uh move into the southeast as we get into uh I guess the first half of Tuesday, January 25th, because you can see behind the front temperatures are going to start off colder again, as some of you may see lows in the upper 30s in places like the villages, Ocala and Palm Coast with other areas, including Orlando, starting off in the low 40s. But if you go farther up towards the north, up around the panhandle of Florida and the Mississippi Valley, it is going to be turning colder, but not as extremely cold uh, that the valley we'll see in the come in the coming days ahead. So instead of seeing like 20s, for example, it's going to start off with low to mid 30s, which is not bad, but it'll still be a, a cold start. And after that, as we get into the second half of the day on Tuesday, January 25th, uh, still no signs of any big weather makers to worry about as we will keep the uh, weather patterns looking uh, mostly quiet and course we'll see some sunshine too and as we uh, look at our high temperatures and still because of the front behind it that is it's going to stay on the cool and chillier side with 50s and 60s as far as our low temperatures go for the morning of wednesday january 26th then the good news is that temperatures will not be as cold like we may see on the morning of the 20 of the 25th so instead of seeing some 30s It'll just, it'll just begin off with mostly in the 40s in and around the viewing area, but there'll be some 30s, though, up towards the north across portions of Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas, but it'll begin with only upper 30s in other areas in the low 40s.
And after that, later in the day on Wednesday, the 20, the 26th, we're still expecting to stay mainly dry as we see more sunshine. And as uh, so we uh, take a look at those high temperatures, and if this is right, which it's kind of early to tell if it's going to happen or not, it looks like temperatures, temperatures will start to warm up back into the mid-60s, maybe some upper 60s too, if that is the case. So that's uh, a lot better than seeing colder or chillier weather that we've maybe seen on the uh, on, on several days in late January. So we'll have to watch that closely. And also there'll be some 60s too if you go towards the north, up around portions of the Mississippi Valley and the rest of the valley, including areas of Birmingham and Atlanta and up towards the Carolinas will mostly warm up into the upper 50s to at or near 60, which is uh, not bad, of course. All right, so here is a, uh, two weeks from today. That takes you to Thursday, January 27th. And there is, again, another system that will, will push in towards the Mississippi Valley and I'll bring some more unsettled weather to end the work week. But for here in Central Florida, I expect the weather to stay, to stay mostly quiet with uh, plenty of sunshine, if that is the case. But we'll have to wait and see. And for temperatures, it looks like it will start to get even more better as we expect to rise back into the upper 60s and into the low, maybe some in the middle 70s. So that's a pretty better weather uh, than colder and chillier weather. So that's so again, that's for the 27th and perhaps there'll be some more warmer weather over here towards the southern part of the Mississippi Valley. We're anywhere near Mobile to Pensacola, Biloxi, Mississippi, and New Orleans will only see temperatures get it to the get it up into the upper 60s and into the low 70s. Now, because of the system, they'll be bringing some more unsettled unsettled weather, possibly for the 27th. That's going to that's going to keep temperatures chilly in the way of 40s and 50s in and around, like, let's say, Birmingham, Jackson and Atlanta. That same system will start to roll into central Florida by two weeks from tomorrow, and that is for Friday, January 28th, and that will bring some rain right here in our state. So we'll give it about a 50% coverage uh, for now, if that's the case. But again, it's just too early to say since this is two weeks away to tell. So that's why I call it the land of voodoo. As we uh, look at our high temperatures, then it looks like uh, we'll still be ahead. Of, we'll be ahead of the be ahead of the same ahead of the same. 60s and into the low 70s, but the, but looks like with the cold front behind it, that is, that's going to bring some more colder air to return for portions of Georgia and South Carolina, where they may not get out of the 20s or perhaps in the 30s, and even some 40s, of course, elsewhere in the Mississippi Valley. But in terms of severe weather with that uh, system, let's go ahead and look at the instability and see what it says here. And right now, I don't see any signs of severe storms uh, for that day. So, well, again, something we'll keep an eye out, but, you know, that could bring changes. And last but not least, the GFS trend ends to Saturday, January 29th. And I believe we'll see some of the rain chances start to wind down a little bit. So that will bring just a few showers. Uh, mostly in part portions of Orange, Seminole, and perhaps along Interstate 95, and we'll give it just a 20 to a 30 percent coverage of these shower chances. But uh, the rest of the viewing area remains uh, pretty dry, I guess you can say. And and if you go farther up towards the north in parts of the valley, it will be just a little bit wet and maybe a little bit wintry if that is the case due to these due to those uh, colder temperatures. And you can tell. That, uh, that same front is not going to be moving into central Florida, I don't think. So I believe that will start to maybe fall apart once it hits closer to our state. And that's going to keep the colder air up north where highs will still remain in the 30s, anywhere near Atlanta and over here towards Greenville, South Carolina. But here in central Florida, it is going to turn much warmer. So it looks like we'll start to warm back into the upper 60s and even into the middle 70s as we head into the final Saturday of this month. So how about that? Better than colder and chilly weather that will be seen in the, in the coming days. So there you have it there, y'all. So, I'm, so I'm, what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and wrap up this live Facebook feed on this Thursday evening. And since then, I'll be spending a day over at the one of the Disney theme parks tomorrow. I may not be able to do another live update with the weather. So 
The next update will have to be probably on Monday of next week, MLK Day, same time at 8 o'clock p.m. And I will continue also by posting more notes or updates in my blog and social media platforms 24-7. But in the meantime, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Thursday night. And remember to also continue to stay safe by taking care of yourselves and each other. And uh, God bless.